So the first thing I want you to do is determine, is this going to be a vertical or a horizontal parabola? Whether it's a vertical or horizontal axis? Now, here, we're going to have a y squared, right? So therefore, that's different than the parabolas we're used to. So our y squared is going to tell us we're going to have a horizontal axis of symmetry. And that's huge for us to be able to tell. Now, when we're going to be finding our, ver our focus and our directrix, that's going to be along the x um, value, right? We're going to be working with that, correct? Yes. Okay, so we're going to have a, we're going to either have a parabola that's going to be opening to the left or opening to the right. The next thing we need to do is write in the um, standard form. So the standard form that we have is going to be y minus k <coughs> squared equals 4p times x minus h, where p cannot equal 0. OK? A couple things to remember. Um, if p equals 0, then we'd have 0 times x, so we'd have no x term, right? And then we'd have y squared equals 0, and then you take the square root of both sides and you wouldn't have anything, you just have y would equal 0. So, what so when, well, what's y equals 0? What is that? That's just a line on, um, on the x-axis. Right? So you wouldn't have a parabola, basically, right? So that's why I'm saying y cannot equal 0. Um, now, for this problem, let's just write out what our rules are. Our vertex is h comma k. Um, our focus for this problem is going to be our h plus p comma k. And our directrix is going to be x minus p. Yes. X equals H minus P. Okay, so those are the basics of information that's going to help me. Why did I know those? Because I know I'm dealing with the horizontal. All right, but we can. I'm going to. The way I'm going to teach this is beyond any point. Does this problem right now look anything like that one? No. 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 Right. So first thing you need to do is one thing is let's get these x's to the other side, and I'll keep these y's here. Okay? Now, why did I not put the 6y over there? Well, guys, whenever we're solving equations or anything, you, we, don't always, we always make sure our same variables are at least on the same side, right? We don't want to put, just leave the y squared, because we don't want to have a y over there. So we at least need to have the y's on this side. Now, here comes the part that you guys are probably going to hate the most. We need it to look like this, which is a binomial square. Does anybody remember how to take something that looks like this, two terms, a square term and a linear term, and make it into a squared binomial? Yes. It's called factor. Kind of with it. It's called completing the square. Oh. Uh, completing the square. All right. So what we can look at, if I don't know, um, if you remember. To complete the square, that goes back to our quadratic form, yeah. <laughs> where b is our coefficient of our linear term. Oh. Right. So here, all I need to do is I'm going to have, I'm going to rewrite it as b divided by two squared. So in this form, I'm going to have six divided by two squared. Six divided by two is three. Three squared is equal to nine. Now to complete the square, we now need to make sure we add that to both sides of our equation. So I have y squared plus 6y plus 9 equals negative 8x minus 25 plus 9. Does everybody see what I did? All I did was I took my linear term, which was oh, yeah, 6, the coefficient. Why? Okay. Yep. So why did I have to do, why did I have to do nine? Why, why is it just you pick, you already just make an any number? No, I systematically had to take the linear term, which is in front of my, uh, my linear variable, the coefficient, divided by two, square it, and I, whatever that answer was, I had to add it to both sides. How do you have to do like a negative 
No, you can either plus or minus on the same side or add to both sides. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> You can either plus and minus the same number, right? That doesn't change the form. That doesn't change the answer. Or just add the same number on both sides. A lot of times with completing the square, you're taught to plus and minus it on the same side. Um, so to now complete this, the reason why we do this is because now I have a perfect square trinomial that I can factor into y plus 3 squared. If you want to check your math and you work on this, it's just completing the square getting this written down. Ready, Donald? Ready, So that's going to equal now negative 8x minus 16. Right? And then, yes, you can factor out an 8. Very good. So everybody, does everybody understand at least what I did? I know some of you need a lot more practice with completing the square. Everybody at least understands the process, the steps I used. Right? So I have y plus 3 squared equals, I can now factor out a negative 8. Um, so when I factor out a negative 8, I'll be left with x plus 2. Yeah. <laughs> now, is it still... Is it looking like this formula though yet? Yeah. Almost, but I don't know what my value of p is. So what I can say is 4p equals negative 8. So to find the value of p, I divide by 4, and I get p equals a negative 2. <coughs> so now I'm just going to rewrite it in total form so you guys can see everything that I have. All right? So now everything is in there, right? We have our H, we have our K, we have our P. So now we just fill in our information. The vertex, remember, is your value of H and K. So in this problem, it's going to be negative 3, negative 2. Remember, it's the opposite. But is that negative 2, negative 3? Um, H, I'm sorry, I swooped around, did I? Yeah. H, K, so it's going to be, sorry, negative 2, comma, negative 3. Thank you. Make sure that the reason why they got is your X minus your H, so it's just negative 2. Thank you. All right, now the next thing to find your focus is going to do negative 2 plus your P. So the focus is going to be negative 2 plus my P, which I said was a negative 2, comma, negative 3. So my focus now is negative 4, comma, negative 3. And then my directrix is now going to be the opposite, the subtraction of that. So you put on all the other problems, you put the k before h plus p. You're right, you got to look at the formula. It's, the it's h, comma, k. The formula, is the formula is over with your, your k formulates with your y, and your h is going to go with your x. Um, on the other one, I was just switch around with it. Then my directors here is going to be x x equals negative two minus a negative two, which x equals zero. So wait, did you say negative two minus negative two? Because this is vertical, right? It's your, yeah, we have a horizontal. Uh, Remember, it's, um, okay. we have a y squared, so it's going to be x. So, where's the graph? so let's take a look at the graph. So my graph, let's just plot the vertex, which is negative 2, negative 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So we have our vertex. Right now, I don't know if it opens left or opens right. I just have my vertex. Well, let's find our focus that we did. So we find our focus, which was now negative 4, negative 3. So one, two, three, four. <coughs> so that's my focus. So obviously now I know that my parabola is going to open to the left. And like I said, we're just going to work on sketching it for right now. And then my directrix is actually going to be on the y-axis.
Did everybody see that? Yes. Okay, so for um, one that opens horizontally, KH is the vertex, and the one that opens vertically, HK. No, your vertex is always going to be your HK. Always going to be HK. Well, thank you. That was helpful. H represents the X coordinate of your vertex, and um, K represents the Y coordinate of your vertex. So is there a question over there? Is that it? It's always just HK. Right. That's a lot of work for one. 